What does it mean to be the best at something? To simply be better at it than everyone else? For one man from South Georgia, being the best led him to the NFL. The path to success was punishing, and in the process, Nate Lewis will tell you, he lost who he was. Now he is on a journey to try to help his brain function like it used to. In his suburban Atlanta neighborhood, Nate Lewis tackles the asphalt hills. Each painful step, a reminder of the price of love. For Lewis, that love affair began when he was just 10 years old, growing up in the South Georgia town of Moultrie. It's all about football down there. It was the football field, a green oasis in a town baked and browned by relentless summers. I was just like obsessed with you the smell of the grass, and so I used to get up in the morning, put my cleats on, and just go run on the grass. If it wasn't a fresh cut, oh, that was emotional. It was on the grass that Lewis, and everyone who watched him play, realized he had a gift. And I was out running there, I would jump higher than them. A running back turned wide receiver his senior year at Colquitt County High School, Lewis was recruited to the University of Georgia. Nathaniel Lewis of Moultrie, Georgia, high in the air. With the ball tucked under his arm, his beloved green field spread before him, Lewis was unstoppable. You hear your heart beat, you hear yourself breathing, and you don't hear nothing. And all you just focus on where you have to go. Yeah, that's what I love to do. By the time Lewis was scoring against Georgia Tech and Clemson, he says he had already suffered concussions Although they didn't call them concussions, it was getting your bell rung. About 14, 13, 14 years old, you actually do see stars. You, your eye, you can't see, you can't focus. Lewis remembers what the coaches would say. Like he said, you all right, you all right? I was like, no. He's like, well, come on, just take, a, take one play off. I took a play off. I wasn't right. And then the NFL came calling. Then the NFL, everyone is fast. Everybody fast, everything's happening quicker. A childhood passion had led him to the top. In his six years playing for the San Diego Chargers and the Chicago Bears, the hits kept coming. How did they treat you for concussion when you got one? Ice on top of my head or on my neck. In the NFL? Huh. And besides ice? That's it. That was it. That's the only th treatment I got. A pastime was now serious business. Lewis says he played through pain and confusion so severe, there are entire days of his career that are a blank. His wife, Sherry, reminds him of one time. The one that you got on the plane and- That was Denver. That was Denver. And he said that he doesn't remember the trip home. He, um, you know, didn't know where he was. Seven years after he left football, Sherry says Nate changed. He would get enraged over nothing, a drawer left open, a shoe on the floor. Very argumentative, lack of communication. He built a wall. What else did you see? Confusion. A look in his eye that just didn't feel the same. We had a good connection and it just seemed like <clears throat> He wasn't there anymore, and he didn't love me. It didn't take much to set him off. Did you feel a lot of rage? Yes. What were you mad about? Not being able to do, not being able to hold a thought. Not being able to hold a thought. And because uh, it's like, you know, I don't want my wife to think I'm dumb. You know, I've been to college. I, I was able to do these type of things, but I can't do it no more. Sherry would learn Nate was suicidal and thought often of crashing the 18-wheeler trucks he now drove to make a living. If I was just drive off this, drive off this cliff, everything explode, that'd be, that'd be it. They were on the brink of divorce. Then came the turning point. Junior Seau was one of the best known players in the yeah, NFL an apparent during apparent suicide his... by a powerful athlete, a force of nature on the football field. Junior Seau, Nate Lewis Chargers teammate and friend, killed himself. It was heartbreaking because the story that they told behind it, 
and the tr struggle that he was going through. And I'm like, wow, I'm going through the same stuff. The autopsy would show Seau's brain had CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a progressive degenerative disease of the brain found in people with a history of repetitive brain trauma, such as concussions. How many concussions have you had? I can't count. I can't really count. I mean, because... Five? More. 10? More. 20? Yeah, about, I'll say about that or more. 20 or more. Nate and Sherry say Junior saved their marriage and Nate's life. He got help. He now takes medicine to deal with the headaches, depression, anger, and attention issues. All right, how you doing today? Good, how about yourself? I'm good. Glad to see you. Same here. At Emory Brain Health Center, he is doing ecologically related neurorehabilitation to try to help his brain function better. Uh, write the names down, distinguish the physical facts of the okay, person. Good. W-O-P-R, write, organize, picture, rehearse. This is Nate's life. He takes a notebook everywhere, writes what he needs to remember, organizes it, paints a mental picture, and rehearses recalling the information. Today, Nate is working on remembering names and faces. Do you remember this guy's name here? Hmm. <sighs> we talked about the mustache. Larry, uh, I remember he played tennis, right? He played tennis. Larry Carlton. Larry Carlton. That's right. Booyah. Good job. Excellent work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not the thrill of a touchdown, yeah. but it is a victory, and those happen rarely for Lewis these days. Well, certainly our nervous system has tremendous capacity to heal itself. What we do in rehabilitation is we try to facilitate that spontaneous recovery. And, but even more importantly, particularly when we're talking about cognitive abilities, what we really are trying to do is to teach people to make really good use of their preserved cognitive skills. This rehab isn't new. Emory neuropsychologist Dr. Tony Stringer used it with patients who suffered brain injuries in car accidents 20 years ago. He developed WOPR and other strategies that help patients like Nate deal with reasoning, problem solving, and attention deficiencies. That's why athletes concerned about their concussions are now seeking out Dr. Stringer. Stringer's research is showing some remarkable outcomes in brains of patients diagnosed with MCI, mild cognitive impairment, an early form of dementia. Working with researchers now at the University of Michigan and Penn State University, they compared people with MCI to people with healthy brains. The orange indicates activity in the brain while they perform tasks. In the MCI brains, far fewer areas are lighting up before cognitive rehabilitation. These brains are from patients who actually have gone through cognitive rehabilitation, and you can see they look a lot more like the healthy controls a lot more activation in the frontal part of the brain, which is the part of the brain that really becomes engaged when we're using a strategy to compensate for memory difficulties. Essentially, other parts of the brain can pick up the slack for parts that no longer function as they should. What researchers know about the long-term impact of concussions on a brain is constantly evolving. The research is too new to show if rehab could delay onset of brain disease. And, you know, my heart, anyone's heart, I think, just has to go out to the athletes because, you know, they put everything on the line. And I think oftentimes they don't even realize what they're putting on the line by just playing the sport that they love. While Lewis comes to grips with what he can and can no longer do, he is also coming out. Until now, he has told no one of his struggles, including his own family in Moultrie. The secret they shouldered alone for 15 years will now be shared. His family not knowing and us doing this has just opened up another door. It feels good, it feels good, and it feels scary. Lewis hopes he has found a new way forward off the field, one that can lead him to a life free of suffering. I know, I know, love you too. Nate is on a maintenance program using cognitive strategies on his own. He sees Dr. Stringer and his therapist every four to six weeks for booster sessions. He's also learning to accept that he will always grapple with cognitive challenges.